Yeah, I was just wondering, like, how did you uh, how did you actually navigate like the the social world? Because I imagine it's the music industry is a bit different to kind of well um, it, normal everyday jobs. It's like this. First of all, this goes for anyone who grew up in my area or whatever, my city. Everyone had a code of respect. Sure. So when you're in a room, you shake hands with everybody in the room, even if you don't know them. You introduce yourself. So there's that to consider. I would say you got, it's a bit of also just knowing how to navigate and network because the music industry itself is very, it's all about, well, most of it's about who you know. Yeah. So if you could find somebody and you could strike up a conversation, that's the best way to handle it. I've been like the nightlife for years. So a lot of my music connections in the beginning came from being at bars or clubs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I would like network around. And also my city was very entrepreneurial. So it's easy to find somebody who probably is trying to start out and do a thing and do their and be on their grind. People would hand out business cards. Yeah. At, yeah. Cl- at everywhere from bars to clubs. Some nice. of my past his business card. <laughs> <laughs> so it always about that. So I'd say there's that. I'd say respect. You respect the people at the top and mm. uh, they respect you back. A lot of it had to do with respect. With like respect and coming off of someone who gives respect, but at the same time, someone like that should be respected in a way too. Like, I don't know if it's because of my disability, but there's just times I, in the back of my head, I'll hear a voice and it's like, mother f- prove yourself. Like right when I get about that mic. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, I feel like, I don't know if it's what I've been through or the trauma I faced or what that was, but it just, it's always kind of there, whether I'm doing an open mic or it's performing anywhere. So I would say that. It's kind of like, like either, either positive self-talk. Like, is that, is that the kind of thing that you're going for? Is it like, it's a bit of both because like, then you put a lot of pressure on yourself hmm. and you go through a lot. Your nights are sleepless. You're a bit of that. Yeah. I would say, I but at the same time too, it's what I would say too, when it comes to everything about the social aspect of the music industry, when I went to Toronto, it was a very kind of similar situation, but now you're around people who are even way more high up mm. because when I applied for the places to be in Toronto for training, you know, they have a interview process. You get in, you go in there and you talk to a lot of people. I've been around Juno nominated artists, which are kind of like our top awards for Canada. Mm-hmm. I've been around people who um, said they worked with Drake. Wow. And all that. So I would say people are relatively chill there. But at the same time, you just don't want to come off as like, I would say, you, you don't want to be cocky or don't want to yeah, be kind of yeah. like acting like you're some big man when you're not like you got, you is, that, want- is that something that you've learned? Is it, did you have to like learn that or is it kind of, hey, it's a little bit of, it's a little bit of both. I feel like there's times I probably bigged up myself in some situations where I felt like I could have done better. I don't have mm-hmm. to be like that. You don't have to be so ego intuitive, but at the same time though, you learn from it and you figure out how to do better next time you go in there kind of shake hands. So it's like, it's a bit of knowing yourself worth, I would say, but also learning to keep humble, but also Mm. wanting more to push and be on your grind, your hustle. Yeah. seems like you've got kind of like the, the social landscape quite sussed out. Like you, uh, I mean, were there any situations that you had, that that really kind of you know you, be, being autistic sometimes we struggle to sort of comprehend very complex things that aren't like said to us to our face do you find that there's been situations where perhaps you're not really getting things has become an issue oh i got a i got a funny story with you on this one <laughs> okay <laughs> so stories are rolling <laughs> Like it. So at one point, 
this is where I look back and I say, I could have done better. Hmm. So I uh, knew this other, other MC from the same area as I'm from. And me and him knew each other for years. He's seen me from when I was 19, still trying to take it more seriously and whatever. And yeah. it's been ironed out between me and him. <clears throat> he forgiven me. I apologize for the way I was or whatever. As everyone else getting more opportunities except me. And I, when I remember I went to, I think, one of the uh, events he was doing. And I was like, at the end, been kind of complaining and whatever. And he kind of he kind of like roasted me a bit too. But at the, said, at the same time, well, we'll go we'll look for it. And, sh- and the next thing you know, he sent me a message. on, And uh, he showed me that Toronto was looking for more people for a training program. And I put my application, got it. First opportunity in Toronto. Nice. nice. So, <laughs> so that was like what funny is like, you want opportunity? Here's your fuck opportunity. Is there any like programs that are for like disabled people to get into the music industry? I would say um, my area, I'm still looking for them. Yeah. I'm okay. still looking for them. The majority of the places. I trained for hip hop and rap were more of like POC places. Mm. Some members of the LGBTQ community were there. There are other people with disabilities there too. Other people with ADHD and other situations too. So that is one thing to kind of consider. But at the same time though, you just want to go in there and just show you're respectful. Yeah. 